My top five stocks to buy for 2022, that is exactly what I'll be sharing in this video, along with all of my positions in these companies that add up to over $85,000 that I have invested within my portfolio. Now, over the past few months, I've been doing tons of research on several stocks to invest in, and these five stocks came out to be my top picks for 2022, which I believe are all presenting great buying opportunities right now. Now, if you don't know me already, my name is Nick, and I am a long-term focused value and growth investor where I try to scope out opportunities to beat out the overall stock market returns. However, in all honesty, I have no idea how these stock picks are going to perform throughout 2022 because stock prices can remain irrational for very extended periods of time. But I believe over a period of three to five years, these stock prices should start to reflect the underlying value of the businesses, in which case we should see outsized returns from these five stock picks. So if you do enjoy the video, make sure to smash that like button to help support my channel. It really does help me out. And if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any of my future uploads throughout 2022. Also, I wanted to let you know I have an exclusive offer to join my Discord community of investors for only $1 in your first month, where you can gain access to all of my stock trades, my stock valuation models, weekly group coaching calls, and much more for only $1 right now. So if you are interested in joining this growing community of investors, make sure to click the link in the description or the pinned comment below to sign up. But anyways, with that said, let's get straight into my top five stock picks for 2022. All right guys, coming in with the first top stock pick for 2022, and that would be Shopify with ticker symbol SHOP, or if you're in Canada, it's shop.to. Now Shopify stock has continuously been rising ever since its IPO back in 2015, where it's now grown to about a 150 billion US dollar valuation. But over the past year, Shopify stock is down, and since all time highs, the stock has dropped over 35% for absolutely no reason relating to the company itself, but rather macroeconomic factors such as inflation and interest rate worries. And as a result, there's been a market rotation out of technology stocks and into financials and energy companies. But in my opinion, this is presenting an obvious buying opportunity where I've been building up a pretty big position in Shopify that's now sitting at about 10 shares, worth about 13,500 Canadian dollars. Just looking at Shopify's stock price history, we can see the stock is incredibly volatile, but really the business just continues growing. And so I see any dip as a buying opportunity where the stock price has always recovered in the past. But here are a few other reasons why I'm incredibly bullish on Shopify for 2022. First of all, Shopify just reported record-breaking Black Friday and Cyber Monday sales for 2021. According to their press release, Shopify announced a record-setting Black Friday slash Cyber Monday weekend with sales of $6.3 billion globally from the start of Black Friday in New Zealand through the end of Cyber Monday in California. This is a 23% increase in sales from the more than $5.1 billion reported in Shopify's 2020 Black Friday Cyber Monday weekend and more than double our merchant sales from the same holiday shopping weekend in 2019. So clearly the e-commerce trends accelerated by the pandemic are not going back to the way they used to be. Shopify still grew 23% year over year compared to 2020, which in my opinion is quite ridiculous. All right, now the second bullish point for Shopify is that their business model is best in class. Shopify being at the forefront of e-commerce growth has a massive opportunity ahead of them. And they've arguably built the most comprehensive e-commerce platform allowing business of any size to transition from brick and mortar retail. Now, what you need to know is that Shopify breaks their business model into two different revenue segments, which are subscription solutions and merchant solutions. First, Shopify generates subscription revenue for its different plans, ranging from $29 per month for the basic plan to $299 per month for the advanced plan. But they also offer Shopify Plus for their large enterprise clients, which starts at $2,000 per month. And from Q3 2021, we can see that Shopify now has nearly $100 million in monthly recurring revenue from their subscription solutions business, which is about $1.2 billion annualized and growing. Second, Shopify generates additional revenue from their merchant solutions business, where they take small percentage fees from their gross merchandise volume or GMV process through Shopify. Additionally, they have other products to help their merchants like Shopify payments and Shopify capital, which allows merchants to get loans to enhance business growth. And the best part about Shopify is the fact that they integrate so easily with the best social media sites out there like Facebook shops, Instagram shops, and now TikTok too. Obviously, we've seen the incredible and explosive growth 
growth of social media sites and TikTok is just taking off like crazy right now. So this should help Shopify grow like crazy too. Finally, my third bullish point about Shopify is that they're in a rock solid financial position right now and they should be incredibly profitable in the future. Shopify's consistently been growing their revenues at an unbelievable rate where they've been able to produce a 54% gross margin in Q3 of 2021. This means that their cost of goods sold is incredibly low and should lead to an extremely profitable business model in the future as they benefit from economies of scale. Lastly, looking at their balance sheet, we can see Shopify has $9.5 billion in cash and cash equivalents, while their long-term debt is only $1.3 billion and total current liabilities of only 760 million. Overall, I think Shopify has incredible fundamentals with a great business model, and although the valuation is pretty high, I do think it's justified right now, especially with the 35% drop, given their huge opportunity ahead. All right, moving on to the second top stock pick for 2022, and that would be Visa with ticker symbol V or Visa.ne on the NEO exchange if you're here in Canada. Now I started buying Visa in late 2021 during the correction in the $190 range, where I've accumulated over $8,000 Canadian in shares on both exchanges ever since. And this is the smallest position of these five stocks that I'm gonna be talking about today. Anyways, as many of you would know, Visa is the largest payment processing company in the world, making retail and online shopping much more convenient by handling all card transactions through their networks, where they earn a fixed percentage on every transaction processed. Without question, Visa has revolutionized the payments industry, and as a result, their stock price is up over 1,200% since its IPO, over 160% in the past five years, but then flat over the past year. And this is where I see the opportunity when it comes to Visa stock. Looking at Visa's earnings history, we can see they got hurt during the pandemic in 2020, but more recently, their EPS has improved rapidly and has surpassed prior 2019 highs. Also in Q3, Visa even increased its dividend by 17% to 37.5 cents per share, which just highlights the growing strength of this business. Next, I looked at Visa's future expected EPS growth, which comes out to 19% expected in 2022 and 17.5% expected per year over the next five years. And based on their price to earnings ratio of 37, a forward PE of 29, and a peg ratio of around 1.5, I do see some pretty good value for their growth right now. Another reason I love Visa for 2022 is because they act as a hedge against inflation. The CPI inflation report for December just came in at 7% year over year, which is the highest inflation level observed in 40 years. So the fact that Visa charges a small percentage on every single transaction processed by their network, the rising cost and value of goods and services should also benefit Visa because that does increase their revenue. Not only this, but Visa's business model is rock solid because they're able to benefit from what's called network effects. This occurs when the value of the service becomes better with more people on the network. For example, think of YouTube. The more creators there are on YouTube, the better it is for the viewers because there's more content to watch. And likewise, the more viewers there are, the better it is for the content creators because they can reach a larger audience. And very similarly, Visa benefits from gaining more merchants and cardholders on the network because both of these increase the adoption of Visa worldwide. So the network effects essentially just create a flywheel for Visa and ends up growing their business automatically. All right, but now let's quickly take a look at Visa's financials right now because I think they're rock solid. Looking at their balance sheet, we can see Visa has cash and cash equivalents of 19.4 billion in the fourth quarter, along with current liabilities of 15.7 billion, meaning that they have a cash ratio above one and they could pay off all their liabilities if they wanted to. And by the way, the platform that I'm using to do all of this stock research is called Inverse, which is a completely free stock research platform and they're actually aiming to be the future social media of finance. Essentially, they make it incredibly simple to perform a comprehensive analysis on a company. And then once you're done, you can share your analysis in the main news feed, just like you would on Facebook, allowing you to connect with other investors and see what others have published. I personally find Inverse incredibly user-friendly and fun to use. So if you wanna sign up for their beta that was just released, you can use the link in the description below. And that way you can get access to all of this free stock research. Finally, getting back to Visa, they're continuing to innovate and invest in super high growth industries such as crypto and the buy now pay later space. For example, on July 6th, 2021, Visa teamed up with a financial tech company BlockFi to launch a 2% Bitcoin rewards credit card to US-based
space residence. Visa's also venturing into the buy now, pay later space with their new product, Visa Installments, available to merchants, which should help push off their competitors. And they're also making strategic acquisitions to try and diversify the portfolio and keep up with new technologies. For instance, since their attempted acquisition of Plaid got cancelled due to antitrust issues in January of 2021, they decided to acquire a Swedish fintech startup named Tink for $2 billion instead, bringing them to more than 250 million customers across more than 3,400 banks and financial institutions in Europe. Overall, I absolutely love Visa and I'm super bullish on them over the next five years and I think they still have massive growth potential despite how big the company already is. All right, now the third top stock I'm buying in 2022 is Meta with ticker symbol FB or MVRS.ne on the NEO exchange here in Canada. If you've been following my channel for a while now, you'd know that Meta is a huge position in my portfolio and it is now actually the biggest position that I hold. Right now I hold just over 62 shares of Meta worth about $26,000 Canadian and I'm super happy with the position that I built up, but I will continue to buy this stock if it does stay at these incredibly low valuations. Anyways, Meta is the new parent company of Facebook, Instagram, Messenger, and WhatsApp. However, Mark Zuckerberg has a totally new focus for the company outside of these existing social platforms, and that would be the metaverse. In my opinion, the whole brand change from Facebook along with the new focus on the metaverse is a great thing for the company and investors alike. It makes the company much more interesting and having way bigger future prospects than just being associated with social media and this should eventually bring up the average multiple for Facebook. On the last earnings call, Mark Zuckerberg said that the goal for the metaverse is to reach 1 billion people and facilitate hundreds of billions of dollars in digital commerce by 2030. Now this goal might seem wild for Meta, but their Oculus products like the Quest 2 have been doing extremely well in terms of sales. On Christmas Day, Oculus became the most downloaded app in the App Store, probably since many people opened their Quest 2 presents and went straight to setting up the app. And we can also see how popular the Google search interest has been over the past few weeks, with the term Oculus spiking to peak interest right after Christmas, and it's still at very high levels today. I love seeing how far ahead Meta is when it comes to VR and AR technologies and actually implementing it in real life and selling it to consumers because not many other companies are up to this stage. It will be great to see them introducing new products like the Ray-Ban smart glasses that they just launched this past year, so we'll have to see what comes in 2022 and beyond. So anyways, how will Meta achieve this goal of reaching 1 billion people in the metaverse by 2030? Well, Meta announced back in October that they'll be hiring 10,000 employees in the UK to help build out the metaverse. Also, Mark Zuckerberg said that they're going to have reduced operating profit in 2022 of about $10 billion, and this should continue for several years to come because there's substantial investment in to the metaverse. But anyways, moving on to their financials, I still love the company just for the four main social platforms that they operate today. Meta's total Q3 revenue grew 35% year over year to $29 billion, while their EPS grew 19% year over year to $3.22 per share. And as we can see, they've consistently been growing their revenue and gross income over the past five years, basically without a gap. But the part we should care about most right now is the balance sheet, because the balance sheet needs to help support this investment into the metaverse. And what we can see is that Meta has $58.3 billion in cash and cash equivalents, while they have $17.8 billion in current liabilities, which gives them a cash ratio above 3 and is great to see. Finally, Meta is growing at a trailing PE ratio of 24, with a forward PE of 22, and a peg ratio of only 0.9, which is incredibly cheap for its future growth and potential. Overall, I'm incredibly bullish on Meta. I love to see how far advanced they are in VR and AR, and that people are absolutely loving the Oculus products and I also see a huge runway for growth for them in the future. Alrighty, now the fourth top stock I'm buying in 2022 is True Leave Cannabis with ticker symbol TRUL.CN in Canada or TCNNF on the US exchange. True Leave is now my second largest holding, but honestly very close to that of Meta, where I hold 804 shares worth about $25,000 Canadian. Anyways, for those who aren't aware, TrueLeave is the biggest and most profitable cannabis company in the US, which has most of its dispensaries in Florida. But through TrueLeave's recent acquisition of Harvest, they've expanded into other states such as Arizona, where weed was just legalized for recreational use in January of 2021 and is seeing explosive growth. So TrueLeave is known as a multi-state operator or an MSO, meaning that they have vertical integration, and that means that they have operations spanning from the cultivation of cannabis all the way to the dispensary dispensaries where they sell it. Now what you need to know about TrueLeave is that this is a company in a sector with incredible future growth and opportunity, 
But because cannabis is still illegal in the US, this makes TrueLeaf incredibly undervalued today. And that's because US cannabis stocks can't be listed on the major exchanges like the NASDAQ, they have to be listed on the OTC or the over-the-counter exchanges. And then they also can't get financing from banks at low interest rates, which makes them less profitable among other reasons. And basically this is why TrueLeave is so undervalued right now. But while all these factors would be benefits to TrueLeave's business, they aren't necessary at all for the company to be successful. As we can see, TrueLeave has been growing its revenue and earnings very quickly over the past few years, where revenue is over 10 X and they continue to see massive growth. In the latest quarter, TrueLeave produced revenue of $224 million, increasing 64% year over year, with a gross profit of 154 million, being a gross margin of 69%, guys. This is unbelievable. Then they were able to produce an EBITDA margin of 44% and net income of 18.6 million, which was despite the high costs associated with the harvest merger. So moving forward, I would expect their profitability levels to continue increasing alongside revenue. And when it comes to TrueLeaf stock, there are just so many catalysts that could propel this stock so much higher over the coming months and years. For instance, if and when federal legalization happens, TrueLeaf could then uplist to the NASDAQ exchange where they would get massive institutional ownership and much more recognition by other investors. Also, when the Safe Banking Act passes, this would allow TrueLeaf to get loans at much lower interest rates than today, where it is sitting at about 9%. This would be great for TrueLeaf, but obviously not necessary. Then cannabis companies would be able to write off a lot of their expenses related to the operation and production of cannabis, which they can't do right now because of the 280E tax code. And finally, once Florida legalizes the recreational use of cannabis within the state, this is where the majority of TrueLeaf's dispensaries are, so this will absolutely explode their earnings and revenue. So honestly guys, I can see this stock 10Xing over the next five to 10 years, and the management is just great to boot, so I absolutely love TrueLeaf stock. All right, finally, the moment you've all been waiting for, the fifth and last top stock I'm buying aggressively in 2022 is Tesla, with ticker symbol TSLA, or you can also buy it in Canada on the NEO exchange with tsla.ne. Recently, I've made Tesla the third largest position in my entire portfolio, where I now hold 17 shares worth about $23,000 Canadian. So Tesla stock is easily one of the most divided stocks in the entire stock market, where some investors believe Tesla is just a car company, but then others, including myself, believe that Tesla is much more, and they're actually on the brink of technology in so many different sectors. And it took me a while to realize why Tesla stock trades at the valuation that it does because let's be honest going up over 10x in literally two years is just insane but many investors just don't bother to take the time to fully understand tesla stock so they end up calling it overvalued out of ignorance and that was actually me two years ago but through tons of research i've come to realize that tesla stock is still undervalued based on the automotive business alone not even including their opportunities within tesla insurance tesla energy the future robo taxi network or other ai ventures that they have going for them so i'll give you a brief summary of why I think Tesla is worth a lot more than $1 trillion today and why I'm going to be building it into one of my biggest positions. First off, analysts are being extremely conservative when it comes to Tesla's delivery numbers and thus their earnings per share and price targets too. The average analyst forecast for Tesla's 2022 deliveries is now about 1.4 million vehicles. Meanwhile, my personal model has Tesla doing 1.67 million vehicles in 2022. So why such a difference? Well, analysts are missing the fact that 2022 is going to be a massive expansion year for Tesla. Tesla is set to massively expand their footprint this year with two brand new gigafactories coming online, one in Austin, Texas, and the other in Berlin, Germany. And these two gigafactories are projected to be much larger and equipped with much better technology than all the other Tesla factories operational today. Now in the first year of production at Giga Shanghai, Tesla delivered just over 150,000 vehicles. So I'm assuming each new factory in 2022 will see a marginal 10% increase over this number, since Tesla will have learned lessons from the startup in Shanghai and should improve upon it. Furthermore, I'm assuming Tesla will see a 10% increase over the current annualized production numbers coming out of these existing factories, which is being very conservative in my own opinion. So in total, these two conservative assumptions lead to 1.67 million vehicles 
vehicles being delivered in 2022, which is significantly higher than what analysts are expecting. And therein lies the opportunity with Tesla stock. Given these deliveries and making some other assumptions, I've calculated Tesla stock price to be $1,500 by the end of year 2022, which represents about 40% upside from today's prices. Not to mention 2022 will be a huge year for cost reduction as Tesla continues to gain economies of scale with higher production rates, as well as the implementation of the new and improved 4680 batteries in their vehicles, which will be a huge improvement. With the batteries being the most expensive part about an electric vehicle, these new 4680 cells should bring a lot of cost reduction and efficiencies to Tesla. Anyways, there's so much more I could say about Tesla, but I just don't have time in this video, unfortunately. So make sure to check out the card in the corner. And that is my last video on Tesla stock where I go into all of the details. All right, well, there you have it, guys. Those are my top five stock picks for 2022, and I believe they all have incredible upside over the next few years. So just to summarize, the stocks are Shopify, Visa, Meta, Trulieve, and Tesla. But let me know down below what your top five stock picks are for 2022. I would love to hear them. And if you do like my stock picks, make sure to mention it down in the comments below. Anyways, if you did enjoy the video, make sure to drop a like. It does really help out my channel. And if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any future uploads. And with that said, I will see you all in the next one.